What is currently happening YouTube? Facepalm here, your friend in Oz and NZ, bringing you reviews, tutorials and game clips, minus the shit. Today I'm going to cover off the free Oculus Tray Tool app and all its features. This is an update on this video from a few months back as things have changed. So if you want to get the most out of what I consider to be one of the best free apps you can get for the Oculus Rift, then stay locked, crush that like button, enjoy and I hope it helps. So the first thing you want to do is head up the description of this video and click the Oculus Tray Tool download link. Once the page opens up, go down and locate the link to the latest version of this software and click it. Currently we're at version 0.82.1, but I'll update the description of the video as it's updated, though the most recent version will always be at the top. Once the software has downloaded to your PC, extract the files using using WinZip or 7-Zip to a location of your choosing. Once that's done, you can delete the original zip file and in this newly extracted folder, you'll see the Oculus Tray Tool setup.exe application. Double click that, follow the prompts to install the application and then click finish when it's done. What I do is untick these, close this, then in the start menu, go down to the Oculus Tray Tool folder, expand that, right click the Tray Tool application and pin it to the start menu. Now it can be started from here whenever. Once the app is running, over here on the left you'll see five tabs, each of which has its own range of settings you can tweak. Down the bottom here you'll see a really cool little PayPal donate button, so if you want to chip in and say thanks to Apollyon for this shitload of hard work he's done bringing everyone this awesome tool, then you can do that here. Back up on the game settings tab you can create profiles for each individual VR app or game and I'll come back to this in a minute. Here you can set super sampling values which increases pixel density and makes your VR apps and games look sharper. A value of zero means there is no super sampling being applied by the Oculus Tray Tool. As a general guide I wouldn't advise going over 1.5 as anything above that really hits your graphics card and the differences become barely noticeable after that point. If you want to see what I mean, here is text in VR on the default zero setting. Here it is again on 1.5 and again on 2.0. Just keep in mind that when changing this setting, it will need to be done before you play a game. If you change this mid-game, then restart the game and the super sampling will be applied. In this drop-down menu, you can toggle ASW settings. ASW, aka Asynchronous Space Warp, essentially allows you to get a smoother experience from lower spec VR PCs. And it does this by dropping your frame rate, aka frames per second from 90 down to 45 when your PC is struggling and then it fills in the blanks with intelligently guessed frames. Auto is the default value and means ASW will kick in when it needs to and this is the setting I would recommend using. Off means ASW is disabled which I wouldn't recommend unless you must have a strict 90 FPS at all times. For instance in games that have a lot of fast pace action and 45 fps will lock your frame rate to 45 fps permanently and ensure that asw is running full time i never use this setting though because i don't want asw being run constantly especially in games with a lot of on-screen movement as it leads to a subpar vr experience and to monitor all of that from inside vr you can enable the visual hud down here using this drop down menu. This will display a graph like this in VR and you can choose to see your current settings for things like super sampling, frame rate or to see if and when ASW is active. And there are also some more developer centric options here. It's worth noting here that both ASW and the visual HUD can be enabled and changed mid game. No restart is required for the changes to take effect. Back up here you can disable and enable voice commands to do things like control pixel density, ASW and the visual HUD using your voice. You can also launch Steam VR using your voice by saying launch Steam VR. Then just press this menu button on either your Xbox 
or left touch controller to access your Steam library. When you want to exit Steam VR, just press that menu button again and select exit from within Steam VR. You can click the edit button here to get a list of available voice commands and you can edit or even add your own phrases. Say if you wanted to enable voice control, you could say either computer start listening or speech on and you can see that these commands are separated by these little semicolons here. Just make sure that in this enabled column the value is set to true for that command to be active or set this value to false if you want to disable this command entirely. An exception worth noting here is that when setting pixel density aka super sampling then you would say this command followed by the number setting you want. So set super sampling to 1.5 for example. Just keep in mind that if you change super sampling settings while in game you will need to restart the game or app for the super sampling settings to take effect. So essentially provided the command is enabled here say what's in this column to get the tray tool to do whatever is in this column. This is the voice engine that Windows is currently using and callback voice is the voice that will talk back to you when confirming a setting has been changed and you can preview what that sounds like here. It's also worth noting that you need to do two things for voice commands to work. First, your microphone needs to be set as default before you enable voice commands. So make sure that in the Windows taskbar, in the recording devices tab, that the Rift microphone is set as default here. Or if you are using a gaming headset or USB mic instead, set that mic as the default option in here. Secondly, you have to have Windows Voice Engine enabled and language packs installed so Windows can understand you. To do that, hit the start key on your keyboard, type settings, click on that, then choose time and language, region and language, click add language, and then select your language from this list and the regional accent from this list. Back on this screen, click on the language you just added, click options, and then under speech, click download. If you don't have a download option here, then speech recognition is already installed, and this will say settings. Once it does, go up and install the language pack, and with that done, go back to the speech settings, set the accent that you have from this list, then go down and click get started and follow the prompts to set up your mic. With that done, go back to the region and language tab, Click on the language you installed, set it as default, and then restart your computer. Oculus Library lets you do things like add Steam VR to Oculus Home, so it appears as an option in Home, meaning that you don't have to leave Oculus Home to launch Steam VR. You can replace the icons of third-party apps as well as view their properties and then further customize them by changing the display name, changing what executable should be called when you launch the app, or set additional launch parameters. And all these settings are applied to every VR game or app you run. But one of the coolest features of the tray tool is that you can create a profile for an individual app or game, which will automatically load up a specific range of settings on a per game basis. To do that, click view add profiles and in this list, pick the settings in these cells that you want to load up each time you start one of these games in your library. Before I go any further though, if the game you want to create a profile for isn't in this list, then you'll need to browse to the game you want to set a profile for in your Oculus Games folder, which if like me you installed that in the default location, it will be located on the C drive, program files, Oculus, software, software. Then in the game folder you want to load a profile for, click on that games.exe application file and choose open. Now you'll see the game you just chose in this list and you can set super sampling, ASW and CPU priority values just for this game or app. So if I were to start Blade Runner Memory Lab, it would load with these settings. But if I started up Aircar, it would automatically load up with these settings instead. 
pretty cool and very handy to use when you have certain games that you can push a little further graphically but some that you can't and you don't want to have to keep changing these types of settings manually. Also, you can tick this audio confirmation box down here if you want to be notified audibly that the settings have taken effect. Closing out of there and moving on to the tray tool tab, you can set the tray tool to start with windows or start minimized in the tray. Using the audio switcher, pops up a window which lets you choose what headphones and mic should be used when Oculus Home is open and what it should use when Oculus Home is closed. Here you can set the Rift's headphone and microphone as the default audio device when Oculus Home starts by ticking these boxes. And if you leave them unticked, Windows will instead use whatever headphones or mic you have set in the Windows Playback and Recording Devices tab. And here you can set what headphones and mic Windows goes back to using when you close Oculus Home. So if I choose this one here for example, which is my studio speakers, over in the Windows Playback Devices tab, you can see with Oculus Home closed, audio from my computer is set to playback through my studio speakers. See this little green tick here? That means my studio speakers are the default option for audio. Then if I open Oculus Home, the Oculus tray tool will automatically switch my sound to come out of my Rift's headphones instead, because I have this box ticked here, which sets the Rift's headphones as the default audio device when Oculus Home starts. And again, if I close Oculus Home, Windows will fall back to using my studio speakers again. And it's the same deal with the mic options. Ticking the hide from alt and tab box will prevent the minimized Oculus tray tool from showing up if you are playing a game and using alt and tab to skip around windows. Minimize tool on X means that if you close the tray tool down here, it will minimize to the taskbar but remain running in the background. Hotkeys let you control ASW settings and the visual HUD overlay using keys on your keyboard. Holding control or alt and using the left left and right arrow keys or the four and six numbers on your number pad toggles ASW on and off. While holding control or alt and using the up and down arrows or the two and eight keys on your number pad controls the visual HUD overlay. Run in debug mode next start means that when you restart the tray tool, it will run in debug mode and the log file created in the install folder will have a lot of handy info that you can send along with the config.xml file to Apollyon if you are having specific issues with the software that isn't covered in this video. Though I would recommend checking the Oculus forum for a solution first before doing that. Also in this tab, you can change the tray tools displayed font size using this slider here. In this power options tab, you can set the Windows power plan to either balanced, high performance or power saver. I use high performance when I am using VR to help ensure my Rift is always getting the power it needs to run smoothly. And I also set this power plan to start up when the Oculus tray tool is started. Disabling USB selective suspend will stop your USB ports from powering down when they aren't being used, which is what I have set. And for users of the Oculus recommended Inantec USB 3 expansion card, which uses Fresco drivers to operate, you can enable some Fresco registry tweaks and also disable Fresco power management on start, which will stop Windows from turning off the Inantec card to save power. If you are using this USB 3 expansion card, I recommend you have both of these ticked, though you will need to reboot your PC for these settings to take effect. Also, to change these settings, you will need to be running the Oculus Tray Tool as administrator. The Service and Startup tab lets you do a range of things which are all self-explanatory as the titles here literally say what they do. Of note though is this spoof CPU ID on Tool Start box which gets rid of the annoying your PC is not up to spec message that you may see if you're on a lower end PC or if you're running an overclocked 
slightly older CPU in your rig that you know is more than powerful enough to cope with VR. And up here, you can start the Oculus runtime service, stop it from running, or restart the service, which can be handy if it freezes or you need to manually restart it for some reason. And the log error tab gives you a whole lot of info on how the startup process and stuff like that went, as well as some options to right click and change certain settings directly from here. And finally, if you minimize the tray tool, it will move down to the Windows taskbar where you can right click it to get fast access to some of the options covered in this video. And that's it for this tutorial. So if you like what you saw, then crush that like button, click the links on screen now for more content, or click the XO logo to subscribe if you wanna. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace!